welcome to our SAP MM trainings next class so today we'll be starting invoice entry part 2 so in this class today we'll be going through these topics enter or change tax information in an invoice enter or change cash discount discount information posting of gross or net of cash dis discount enter invoice in a foreign currency enter invoice for purchase order with account assignment group enter invoices related relating to a blanket purchase order so first of all we'll start with the business example um, so most of the invoices received in your company suppose are taxable okay like in every country we need to pay some sort of tax okay, so I'll talk about tax in a minute so most of the invoices received in your company are taxable it is your job to check the tax data is correct you also take account of the terms of payment when you enter the an invoice. Occasionally the invoice currency varies from your local currency. Your company orders various materials for direct consumption. For, for example, cost center assets, etc. You want to verify that the account assignments for the cost of the invoices are correct. So we'll, go, we'll be going through all these topics in today's class. So. <clears throat> First of all, we'll, we'll start with tax. <laughs> what is tax? So tax, like every country, has some sort of tax rule. Okay, and in general terms, here you can see we can call it um, what we call it. This is my company here, and say when we buying the raw material from the vendor, we need to pay some sort of tax. Okay, which is governed by the tax authority of that country. Okay, so we need to pay some sort of input tax here. And once this company or once my company will produce the goods and sell it to the customer here, again when we invoice to the customer here for the final product, we need to add some sort of output tax. Okay, so these output tax are also known, known as VAT, value added tax. Okay, so that's a tax. So every country, as I said, every country has some sort of tax rules. So some countries may be charging 10%, some countries may be charging 19, some countries charging 12%. So every country has different tax rules. And we can customize those tax rules in our system that I'll be going through. So this tax information you can also uh, see in our, when you do the invoicing in SAP system. So for example, if I do one invoice, say if I go to Miro transaction, and here if I enter say invoicing date, reference can be ABC and here if I enter say this document number which I already created before the class so here you can see here by default it was showing me this 19% here okay so you can see we have a couple of different uh, text types here but by default saying 19% and that default 19% will be inherited by the line items here so we have two line items for one purchase order Okay, so you can have maybe more than one purchase order and more than two lines as well. So all those line items here, they will inherit this 19%. If I scroll to right, you can see here, it is, every line item here is saying I'm, I'm using 19% tax or domestic tax. Okay, so where this is coming from, that's coming from here. Now once you have entered the item here, uh, or entered the uh, purchase order number here, system as I said system will inherit the tax information from here but if I change it at the header level here it will not affect the item level let's see if I make it 10% here press enter now if I scroll to right you can see this is still 19% okay so that means once the items has adopted the tax rate it will not change it unless I change it manually from here Okay, so if you change it at the header level, it will not affect the line item. All right. So let me show you another scenario. If I do it again, if I start the micro transaction again, so here you can see by default it's saying 19%. Okay, so I'll show you in a minute where the default setting is coming from. So here if I now change it to say 10%, okay, now whatever purchase order number I will enter here that will inherit this header now alright so if I press enter 
if I scroll to right, you will see this is saying I'm um, 1i, 10%. So this is again inheriting from here. Again changing it here will not change at the item level. Okay, but you do have the option to change it at the item level. So here I can say this, this one is 10%, the second one I want to make it 19%. So we can do that if you want. So that's your text data in the invoices. Now customizing. So in the customizing you can set up so that you, you can maintain a default value for the text. Alright, so here when I start the transaction uh, my row, you can see 19% was the default one. Now how does the system know that 19% is the default one? So you can do the setting here when you use this menu path in the customizing or you can directly jump to the transaction OMR2. Okay, so with this transaction if you enter, you can directly jump to the setting where you can do the default text code for the transaction. Let me show you. If I go to slash an OMR2 transaction, here you can, uh, let me first select company code. Yeah, so it is defined for each company code. We using thousand number company code in our system. If you select that and go to detail or double click on it, here you can see VA is the default text code. So that's a 19% one. If you op open that and you can change it to something else if you want as a default text code. Okay, so that's a 19% coming from the customizing. So that's your text code and all the most of the text because text customizing is all basically uh, is a financial side of SAP. It's basically done by the FICO consultant. Now next part of the class is terms of payment. We'll talk about terms of payment. What is terms of payment? So terms of a payment is like um, you can have some sort of uh, uh, agreement with the vendor that whenever if we pay the if we pay the payment to the vendor on so within 10 days, here you can see, let me show you. So here you can see that I have agreement with the vendor that if I make the payment within 10 days, I will get 3% discount. If I make the payment say in 20 days, say then I will get only 2% discount. And if I make the payment in 30 days, then there is no discount and we have to pay the net. Okay, so this type of setup you can you can do in the in the master data in the transaction and also in the customizing where you can maintain that whatever is agreed with the vendor you can maintain those data here so let me show you this one so basically you maintain this you can maintain this data at a vendor level okay so when you create the vendor in the vendor master data let me show you one vendor here so let me open this vendor So here you can see terms of payment here. If I open this search help here. So you can see we have different types of terms of payment. So 002 is currently used here. So 002 means 14 days payment 3% discount. If we pay in 30 days 2% discount. If we, if we pay in 45 days then no discount. We need to pay the net amount. Same way you can have different ones say 14 days 3%. So you can see different different setup here. So the number 002 is used here. Okay. So whatever is used in the vendor master that will be inherited in your purchase order. So whenever you create the purchase order for this vendor, purchase order will copy the terms of payment from here. If I open one purchase order for you, 